basically, uh, <laughs> if you can, if you have the opportunity to rebuild, bring on a racehorse that doesn't need to be managed. You know, that's right. that, again, that culture of, of, of what, what I like to say is owner operated culture, that every person from the founder to the front line feels like they have real ownership in the company, whether they do financially or not, but they feel like, well, what I do is going to affect this organization. It's going to affect this population. It's going to affect the mission. And if you have that kind of self uh, discipline, you don't need annual reports. You don't need write-ups. You know, you, you can really, can you imagine taking all that time and focusing on doing great things rather than managing people who aren't good at their job? Right. And right. if they really aren't, you know, another thing you, know, you mentioned that if they really aren't good at their job, you need to address it. Why? Because there are two social theories where people are constantly, um, these are organizational behavior theories, where they're con you're constantly um, comparing yourself to other people, right? I mean, we do it on Facebook, right? You mean you, you have people who are depressed because they're like, oh, my friends are having such fun. Look at what they're doing, you know, even though it's a fake background. <laughs> not, a, not anymore. They're not doing it. <laughs> you know, so, so it's that kind of, so where, am I, where do I sit in social class? But then there's also this comparison theory like you would do with your siblings. Like, well, why is mom treating you know, him differently when I, when I did that? So people are, that happens in employees. You know, they're constantly seeing, well, if you're not addressing that person's behavior, then why can't I do it? Why am I busting my butt? And why am I trying to be excellent when they're not addressing that? So what happens is that you can have you know, 100 people on your team and 99 of them are racehorses and you have that one slacker and those other 99 are watching to see what you do with that. Right. And if you don't do anything, you're going to bring down the other 99. They're going to start looking for other jobs and doing other things. So what you're doing, again, I, again, counseling people, I say, do you really want to have to replace 99 people when you can just deal with one? So, I mean, you know, the data and the facts and the, the if you put, put it that way, it's like, oh, yeah, maybe I should just deal with that one person rather than have to fill 99 more positions that are going to leave. Right. So, 